Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is part two of the Kato N scale uh, D51200 steam locomotive. And today we're gonna be um, we're gonna be running it on the track and seeing how it performs overall and just have some fun with it. All right, so I have it here on the track. And we're going to change the camera angle, actually. Alright, hopefully you guys have a good side view of the locomotive. Right now we're going to see how slow it goes initially, right out of the box. And then we're going to let it run in. So I'm actually not going to go in the corner over here where my hand is. I'm not going to go in that corner um, as I really don't fit and it just causes problems with the cord so I'm gonna actually stay in the center of the track circuit so hopefully it works well I'm just gonna reach over to the controllers and let's just get this thing going I'm gonna stop talking all right forward it should be forward <laughs> Turn up the power a little bit at a time, and it's going already. I'm gonna turn it back up. All right, there it's making a sound, and it is moving very slowly. Oh, it stopped. Okay, it can go slower than that. Um, it looks like it kicks in at around maybe 12 or 13 percent. Um, let's try it backwards. Yeah, it's definitely not working too well, but of course we haven't run it in yet. Anyway, but it still has a very good slow speed. Anyway, we're going to send it off now and have it run in for 30 minutes in each direction, standard for any locomotive. And then we'll come back and see if the performance has improved, and then we'll go from there. Okay, I'm going to turn it up to 50% uh, speed, unless that's too fast. We'll see how fast it goes with 50%. Yeah, I don't think that's too bad. Alright, I'm outside of the loop now. Oh my gosh. The headlight actually works. No freaking way. That's so cool. Which makes me wonder, does the back one work? Let's see, let's change the direction really quick before we let it run in. And, I mean the front headlight is directional. But it doesn't look like the back headlight really works. Yeah, it doesn't work. It's just when it goes forward. All right, well, that's cool how the headlight works. Anyway, we're going to leave it running for 30 minutes forwards, 30 minutes backwards, and then we'll come back, see you guys in an hour. Alright, so I actually have some unfortunate news for our D51 right here. So I ended up getting it all run in, it went 30 minutes in each direction successfully, and it did seem to run a lot better, and um, I was just... Uh, running it to test the flywheel as well because I forgot most Kato locomotives come with a flywheel so I was testing out the flywheel with the controller and then it started to not work um, I don't exactly know what happened but when I apply power to the locomotive uh, at first it'll make a buzzing noise but then it'll just 
it just won't go anywhere and it'll stop making any sort of noises so it's not responding at all to the controllers or anything i tested out some of my other locomotives to see if it was a problem with the controller and those locomotives actually work just fine so it's most definitely a problem with the locomotive which is uh, super unfortunate I'm not enthused by this at all and so I think what we're gonna do for the rest of today's video is we're going to try and open it up and see what could possibly be going wrong and I guess if we can't find anything then I don't know what to do Alright, so I have the camera set up so that you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. What we're going to start with is just unscrewing these two screws right here. And we're going to see if it leads to anything. So, I'm going to go ahead and start a time lapse. And if I find anything, then I will uh, stop the time lapse and give you guys an update. Okay, so actually you don't have to take the base plates off, you just have to um, take the shell off of the top of it, right here, um, and there's a piece of metal in it, and I'm guessing that's what directs the light to the top of the locomotive, but that's not what we're worried about right now. I don't know where to start with this thing. Um, it looks like a coreless motor, maybe, um, and it definitely has those flywheels that I was talking about, um, the drivetrain seems to be working just fine when I spin the flywheels. Yeah, the drivetrain is working just fine. Initially, it doesn't look like there's anything wrong. So, I mean, I don't know what to do. Yeah, guys, I don't know how to take this apart without breaking it. So, I don't know what we're going to do. I guess we could take a look at the tender. Um, not that that's going to help us with anything. Actually, I think the tender is just one solid piece. Yeah, I don't know what to do, guys. I am not an expert at this stuff. I guess we could try testing it out, because I have left it overnight. Um, we could try connecting power to it in some way. Alright, I have my old Kato controller. And I have a cord that I cut off. Um, I'm just going to see if I can apply power somehow. Okay, let's see if I can hold these wires on. Somehow. I don't want to shock myself. Probably not going to get shocked, but... I'm still afraid of that possibility. Screw it, I'm just going to use my fingers on here. Oh, Shaz. It's not having a... See, it's making the buzzing noise. And then it keeps cutting out once it's under power. The flywheels are spinning. But then it's not going. But I know it's connected to the flywheel. Still. It's 
It's just not going for some reason. It's like over a certain percentage it won't go. Huh. That is very strange. Yeah, guys, I have no idea what's wrong with this. If you guys can help me out, then I would be super grateful. If not, I'm probably going to have to contact uh, Kato and see if I can get it replaced or something like that. Anyway, yeah, that's going to be it for today's video, I guess. We never found the problem because I'm afraid of opening this up anymore. And I don't know what I would even do to figure out what the problem is. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. You know what? Actually, I'm not giving up that easily. We're actually going to do some more testing. What we're going to do first is we're actually going to try and test it directly on the motor to see if the motor is actually the problem. Actually, don't know how I'm going to do that, but we're going to try our best. Okay, so I'm actually just going to hold it like this while I try applying power to it. Um, set the tender to the side. See if we can apply power to the chassis, because it does look like it's powered by the split chassis. What's going on here? Okay. That's something. See if it works in reverse. I mean, well, this is technically forwards for the engine, but it's reversed for the controller. Okay, that's a good sign, so it's not anything with the motor or anything like that. Um, it looks like it might be something with the way the power is getting to it. So, I might have to look more into that rather than the motor. Well, let's try it on the track again and s double check what it's doing. Okay, we're going to put it on. Okay, that's weird. It's working now. That is some weird crap. Okay, turns out there's nothing wrong with the locomotive. It's working. What the heck? Okay. So I guess I just needed to apply power directly to the chassis and... That is weird. That, that, that's not... That's not normal. It... How did it just fix itself? Okay, well, that's that's some weird stuff going on. It looks like it's working just fine now. Let's uh, get it put back together and then check out the performance some more. Okay, so I think I found the real problem. So I reconnected the tender, right, to the locomotive, and it started um, not working again. So I disconnected the tender um, I took it apart and everything again to test it out some more, and it looks like um, it's not working when the tender is connected to it. More specifically, this bar that connects the tender to the locomotive, and I think I know why it's causing problems. So, yeah, it, it's working just fine right now. Here, I'll show you guys. It's, it's working fine by itself. See? It's running perfectly fine by itself. And, uh, but when I put the tender on it, or when I put this bar that connects them onto the locomotive, it stops working suddenly. And I think the problem is the way these wires are set up here. I think there's electrical current um, jumping between them and causing a short. 
So I'm going to have to find some way to separate those two parts a, a little bit better. Um, and then maybe it'll work better. So yeah, I'll get working on that. And then we can actually test out the locomotive's slow speed and pulling power. Well, I guess there's not much power to really measure because I don't have a anything to measure for us, but we're just going to run a train behind it because it's fun. Okay, so what I ended up doing with the locomotive and tender connection is I pried the two wires away from each other and then I put a little drop of hot glue in between them so that it'll stay there and they're staying apart now and it's working just fine here i'll just show you it's on the outer line so i'm gonna turn this part on okay oh goodness so you can see it's working now i think it was just on a dead spot maybe yeah there's no shorts it's running just fine now um, I don't know if I need to run it in again, but I don't think I'll really worry about it this time. I guess we should test the slow speed first before we get connected to a train. So I'm going to move it backwards more, and then I'm going to get it going as slow as I can. Making a buzzing noise. Starting to move. And it's not moving again. Okay, come on. I just fixed you. Come on. Oh my gosh. Just keep stopping. It doesn't look like slow speed is going great for this locomotive. I might need to run it in again. Um... But I'm not going to worry about it because I already spent a full hour running it in and I don't want to spend another hour running it in. So that looks like about as slow as we're going to get at this current moment in time. So now what I'm going to do is I have a freight train set up. It's a very short freight train. And it features a couple of new additions to my collection of freight cars. First of all, there's this giant gondola. It's probably one of the longest train cars I have right now, besides my coaches. And it's actually completely made out of die-cast metal, which is pretty cool. And then I have this other gon gondola, which has what looks like a... That doesn't look like coal. It looks more like probably gravel that it's holding. And there are a couple of glue splatters, paint splatters, from the previous owner, I guess. Because I did buy all of these secondhand. And then I have a log, um, a log car. Which uh, came without a coupler on this end. So it kind of has to be the, at the back of the train. And then I do have a couple of other cars to make it a little bit longer and to make it a little bit more interesting. So that's the consist that I'm going to put behind the D51. Uh, one day I do hope to have more uh, Japanese freight cars for the D51 as it is a Japanese locomotive. But for today it's in America and it's going to pull some American train cars. Alright, so let's go ahead and get the D51 coupled up to these freight cars. I'm going to switch the crossover because I don't think we use it nearly enough. So I'm going to have to turn on two controllers. So I'm going to start turning them up. Okay, and now I'll see if it coupled, and it looks like it did actually, so that's good. Um, these have their own sort of knuckle couplers that came 
uh, pre-installed by the previous owner. So that is just less work for me. And it stopped again. It's unbelievable, this locomotive. I just fixed it. Anyway, um, and then before we actually get going, I thought it would be cool to do a little uh, size comparison. Now here comes my largest locomotive uh, in the collection, the GS4 Southern Pacific Daylight. And it's kind of out of shot, so I'll move the camera. But there's the Southern Pacific Daylight locomotive compared to the D51. Probably do a better shot. As you can see, it's a lot longer. It's a bit taller, and it's just an overall larger locomotive. So, yeah, there's an American locomotive with a Japanese locomotive. And then just for one more comparison, I thought I'd show you guys my smallest locomotive, which is my Bachman Prairie. I believe it's called a Prairie locomotive, but I have it right here with its original yard boss train cars. As you can see, they're actually about the same height and not too far off from the same length. If anything, the D51 is only a little bit larger than this little shunter locomotive. Anyway, I thought today would be a good day to run all of my steam locomotives because the D51 is actually my third steam locomotive that I've ever had. So I thought since we have three lines, it would be a good time to run all three steam locomotives together and have a fun little running session. All right, so I'll go ahead and get the Yard Boss transit out of the way first, if it'll go. I think I just need to clean this track, or maybe the locomotive is having problems. But I'll have it be going around, and then let's get the daylight out of the way. Uh-oh. It seems that I have caused a short circuit. Okay, um, hold on, bear with me for a second. Okay, it looks like I resolved the problem. Let's finally get the daylight out of the way. And then we'll have the D51 finally come out. And it's not going again. Hold on. I think I know why it's having problems. Give me another second. Okay, so I still had it on the switch track, so it was kind of shorting out from getting power from this end. So now I think it should be running properly now. Let's finally get it going. In the right direction. Alright, there we go.
I think the prairie locomotive is doing well enough that we can slow her down to much more reasonable speed. That looks a lot more reasonable. And she's not cutting out. I guess she just needed to warm up or something like that. It seems that there's been a little bit of a hazard on the track. These 3D printed couplers are not working so well. Hint, hint, future video about couplers.
You know what, I think we should give this locomotive another chance at the slow speed test, so let's go ahead and get this uncoupled. And I'll just move these back. Okay. Now let's turn on the controller. Try it in the forwards direction first. Then we have a nice daylight background for the train to pass by. Anyway, let's turn up, see. Oh yeah, it's definitely better now, after running for a little bit. It's definitely really slow. I think we can get it slower. Let's try backwards. That right there. That's probably like 8% speed for this locomotive. And it's actually pretty slow, especially for an N-scale locomotive. Wow. Let's try it forwards. I think that's even slower. Did it stop? I think it stopped. Okay. That's still about like 8% speed. And that's really, really slow. I've seen some of uh, Sam's Train's reviews, and I don't think there's very many of his double O gauge locomotives that'll go as slow as this N scale locomotive. That's how amazing this is. That's how amazing all of Kato's locomotives are. I've noticed that all of Kato's locomotives that I have had so far have gone super slow. They've had a really, really good slow speed. It's just insane. Let's watch it go backwards one more time. That's really, really slow. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please be sure to subscribe, and if you liked the video, then please leave a like. If you did not like it, then please let me know why, and I will try to fix it in the future. That's going to be it for today's video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.